Arcane Mage is the most complex spec in all of Azeroth, but today I will be making it easy to follow and beginner friendly for you. If you've looked at the Wowhead page and you've gone, oh my goodness, this is just absolutely mental, don't worry guys, I've got you today. So, I do every spec in WoW, and I make them all beginner friendly. If you're new here, my name is Javier. Let's start off with the stats. Intellect and getting a higher eye level of gear is always going to be the top priority. Once you've done that, let's take a very quick look at the secondary stats. Crit, more damage. Haste, things happen faster. Mastery. It's going to increase how much mana we have and our mana regeneration. We then have something called Arcane Charges, which are on my weak aura here. Let me just make one. When I use Arcane Blast... Can you see there? I've got a charge, and there's one, two, three, and four possible arcane charges. So, on our mastery, arcane charges increase the damage of arcane blast and arcane barrage, two of our main spells. It also increases all of our arcane damage. That is what our mastery stat does. Versatility increases damage and healing done, and decreases damage that we take. The way that arcane mage works is that we have a burst phase and then just a normal phase. So, the way the burst phase, um, the, what it's centered around is this spell here, Touch of the Magi. What this does is it opens a, I'm going to use some metaphors to help explain it. It opens a 12 second window of like Pandora's box, basically. So, when you use it, it applies Touch of the Magi to your current target for 12 seconds. And in those 12 seconds, it's going to be accumulating all of the damage you do in that 12 second window or 25% of it at least and after the 12 second the 12 seconds ends it's going to then explode all of that accumulated damage onto your target it is then very fair to say that you could assume if we're accumulating damage in a window and then it's going to do all of that damage you obviously want to be doing as much damage as possible in that window to make sure that the 25% it's going to do is as high as possible right so, let's just go over that again. It applies Touch of the Magi to current target, accumulating 25% of damage you deal to the target for 12 seconds. After the 12 seconds, it's then going to explode for that amount of arcane damage to the target and nearby enemies. Okay, so now that we've understood that, how are we going to make sure we're doing as much damage as possible in that 12 second window? First, we're going to use Evocation. We're going to use that before we go into our Touch of the Magi. So this here on the left is your top priority, and the right-hand side is your bottom priority. And what we basically have is... Um, in fact, I'm going to move these along to make it even easier to follow. So this is your burst cooldowns. This is then the burst phase here, and then this is just the rest of the rotation, okay? So it's kind of easy. I think if you even set up your action bars like this, it'll be really easy for you to follow. Evocation. Increases your mana regen by 1500% and grants clear casting. While channeling evocation, your intellect is increased by 2% every 0.5 seconds. And that will last 20 seconds. So because it, uses, it, it takes 3 seconds nearly to actually you know, get going, we don't want to use it within our Touch of the Magi window because that would be 3 seconds of the 12 seconds gone in just you know, buffing ourselves up with intellect. What a waste of time. So we use Evocation before we use Touch of the Magi. Now, you also notice that it says it grants clear casting. That is this here. Casting Arcane spells have a chance to make your next Arcane Missiles free. Arcane Missiles is this. We can only use it when we have clear casting, okay? So we're going to use Evocation, giving us a load of mana regen, granting us clear casting, and our intellect is going to be increased for basically the entire burst window. Now... What we then do, technically it's this way around. What we then do is we can use Arcane Barrage. So if you watch closely, can you notice, your, well, what you'll notice is that it travels to the target and takes a second to get there. You see that? It takes a second to get to our target. And you'll also notice, so if you know what the global cooldown is, watch the global cooldown. If you don't know what the global cooldown is, notice how when I use an ability, a clock face goes round. I can't use another ability until that clock face has gone all the way around. But notice how Touch of the Magi here doesn't change. It is off the global cooldown. So again, we want to do as much damage as possible, don't we, in that 12-second window? Well, what we could do is use Arcane Barrage 
and then use Touch of the Magi before Arcane Barrage hits our target. So while it is midair, we go, right, start the 12 second clock. Meaning that we've basically, we have snuck in an Arcane Barrage into our 12 second window. We've snuck in an extra spell. If you're like, that is just too much, then don't bother. If you're, you know, a beginner and you're like, I can't bother with that, that's just ridiculous. Just, just don't do it then. Just cast Touch of the Magi and don't worry about doing it while Arcane Barrage is in the air. So we do the Arcane Barrage. We've got our buff from Evocation. We open up the 12 second window of Touch of the Magi. Arcane Barrage then hits. We then use the Arcane Surge cooldown. And this is the big daddy. And by the way, if this is already sounding overwhelming, I'm going to go through this multiple times to really hammer it in, and we're going to build it block by block. Arcane Surge. You expend all of your current mana to annihilate your enemy target and nearby enemies based on the mana spent. And don't forget, Evocation is also going to increase mana regen, so you should be at a you know, really high amount of mana. This will also generate clear casting. For the next 15 seconds... Your mana regen is increased by 400% and spell damage is increased by 35%. And there we go. We are fully in the burst window. So let's just go over it one more time. Evocation to increase our intellect. Then do an arcane barrage. While it's in the air, we're going to use Touch of the Magi to open up the 12 second burst window. And then we're going to do arcane surge, which is going to spend all of our mana, massively increase mana regen, but also increase spell damage by 35%. So we've got massive extra spell damage from here. We've got a massive extra intellect boost from Evocation, and we're in our 12-second burst window. Now that we're in it, we need to look at what spells we're using to do the maximum amount of damage in that window. So Arcane Barrage launches bolts of energy at our target, causing damage. For each Arcane Charge you have, it deals 95%, so let's call it 100, just to round it off. It deals 100% additional damage and grants you 1.5% of maximum mana. But you'll also notice in white writing at the bottom of the tooltip, it consumes all arcane charges. And as you can see in my weak aura here, I have no arcane charges. Touch of the Magi generates four arcane charges. So basically, you'll get four arcane charges from Touch of the Magi. So you can then do a 400% or 380% extra damage arcane barrage. Amazing. What we can then do is we can use Arcane Blast, which just does some damage, and it does more damage each time you use it, but the mana cost gets higher. We can use Arcane Blasts to generate Arcane Charges again. As you can see, you can generate one or two sometimes. I just generated two. And then you can use Arcane Missiles, which you can only use when you get clear casting. And remember, we have a chance when using spells to get clear casting, and some of these cooldowns will also grant it. So what I would say in the burst window is once you have four arcane charges, use arcane barrage. Then use arcane blast to get up to four arcane charges. And then use arcane missiles whenever you can. Hopefully that will make sense. Let's now put it into practice, okay? Right, here we go. Evocation, channel it to get your intellect buff. We're going to use arcane barrage and immediately use touch of the magi. Oh... Open up our massive damage buff with um, Arcane Surge. Use Arcane Barrage to spend our charges. Let's use two Arcane Blasts to get our extra Arcane Charges back. Use Arcane Missiles because we've got clear casting. And then I'm going to use two Arcane Blasts to get two more charges. And then I'm going to use Arcane Barrage to spend them. Any clear casting charges I'm going to spend. Get more Arcane um, Thingy Bobs. And that is basically what you do until Touch of the Magi comes off your target. So when you actually see it in practice there, it's actually quite simple. Use Evocation to get your Intellect buff, use an Arcane Barrage, then really quickly use Touch of the Magi, open up that 12 second burst window, get your extra percent of damage from Arcane Surge, spend the charges that you've got here with Arcane Barrage, use Arcane Blast to get them back, um, back up to four, and when they are back up to four, you use Arcane Barrage again, and you literally just use any free casts of Arcane Missiles, which you get with clear casting, and can only use with clear casting. And that is the burst window. So it's actually quite straightforward um, when you look into it like that. I don't know why everyone else makes it so complicated. It's just absolute insanity. God forbid a normal player can actually, you know, play Arcane Mage. It's so fun as well. It's so fun. Then we go on to the normal rotation which is basically when you have stuff on cooldown. Um, one thing you'll notice 
is that Evocation and Arcane Surge are on a 1.5 minute cooldown, and Touch of the Magi is only on a 45 second cooldown. You can then, therefore, do a mini burst and a big burst. A big burst means I've got all of my cooldowns off cooldown. Evocation, Touch of the Magi, and Arcane Surge. Once you've done that big burst, in 45 seconds you can do another Touch of the Magi, but without Evocation and Arcane Surge. Just use Touch of the Magi on its own, and just do the same thing, and it's basically a mini burst. Um, and then another 45 seconds, you'll get these two off cooldown, and you could do the big burst. Once you're out of your burst period, you can use Shifting Power on a minute cooldown. This will actually just reduce your cooldowns by 12 seconds while you channel it. So cool, we can get back into our burst phase even quicker. That's all that does, really. Then use Arcane Missiles whenever you can. Use Arcane Barrage to spend your charges. Use Arcane Orb when you've got less than four Arcane Charges. Um, the reason being that Arcane Orb will generate charges whenever it hits an enemy. Um, so it's a great way of getting quick um, ones up. Use Arcane Blasts to generate charges. And then if you do run out of mana, use Arcane Barrage. And that's it. That's the rotation. Let's go through it fully together one more time. And then we'll look at the talents and you know other bits and bobs and how it all comes together. So I'm going to do a big burst. Evocation. Channel that to get my intellect. Arcane Barrage, then touch of the Magi. Big burst damage of Arcane Surge. Spend the charges. Let's get them back up with Arcane um, Blasts. Nice. I've got four charges. Let's use Arcane Barrage. I'm then going to use my Arcane Missiles that are free. I'm then going to use my Arcane Charges um, to get my stacks back up. Four. Okay, cool. I can use an Arcane Barrage. Really nice. And now what I'm going to do is get my cooldowns back off cooldown with Shifting Power. I'm going to use my Arcane Missiles that I can use. Oh, look, and Touch of the Magi. I can go into a mini burst. Cool. Let's then use Arcane Barrage. And again, I'm going to use my Arcane Blast to get my charges back. Cool. I can use my Arcane Missiles. I've got four charges again. Let's use Arcane Barrage. Now I can use Arcane Blast twice to get four more. And Arcane Barrage again. Still no proc on my Arcane Missiles, so I'll just keep going. Um, we're out of that phase now, so it's Arcane Missiles. I've got four charges. Let's use Arcane Barrage. Use my Arcane Orb to get some charges quickly. Arcane Blast to get the other two charges back up. And now I can use Arcane Barrage. Oh, nice. I've got Arcane Missiles again. And soon I'll be going into my Big Burst period again. And there you go. That is the entire rotation. Well, I think you see it like that, I actually believe that that is quite a straightforward and fun to follow rotation. I'd love to hear your comments in the, in the, in the comments below um, on this because... It really is fun when you know how. I'm really hoping that I've made it simple enough for you to follow. Now that we've gone through it properly, let's just look at the talents and how it comes together. If this part overwhelms you, then just don't worry about it. Just concentrate on, like I say, building blocks. Concentrate on getting the rotation together. Practice it on the dummies like I'm showing you. And then be like, right, now I've conquered that. Now I'm going to focus on the talents. Uh, there's never precision. This is quite an important one. Consuming clear castings so when you use arcane missiles, it will actually increase the damage of your next two arcane blasts or barrages by 20%. So it is quite important to consume that clear casting on your missiles when you get it. And then when you consume never precision, which is this one here, um, this one here, sorry, when you consume it with arcane blast, it increases the damage of your next arcane barrage by 10% and causes it to generate two arcane charges. Um, if That sounds a bit complex, but basically it's just happening. Just follow the rotation I've shown you and it's already happening. When you do get clear casting, it will actually increase your intellect as well, as an FYI. Clear casting can stack twice, or, or two additional times even, by the way. So if you are, um, if you're a very detailed person, you may have noticed that when I say go into the burst period that I said um, Evocation grants clear casting and that Arcane Surge grants clear casting. So you may have been thinking, well, hang on a minute, am I wasting them? No, you're not. You will get multiple stacks of clear casting and it is allowed because of this talent. So you're not wasting them by doing that, by the way. Another tip here, you can actually channel Evocation and Arcane Missiles while moving. Arcane, sometimes because of its burstiness, can be a bit annoying to move with. This talent makes it a lot easier. Arcane Debilitation, damaging a target of Arcane Missiles. Again, make sure you're using those clear castings. Um, it will increase the damage they take from Arcane Missiles, Barrage and Blast 
by a percentage for eight seconds, which can overlap. So again, using those clear castings will increase the damage of everything else. And every three times you consume clear casting, your next RK missiles deals increased damage and fires up to nearby enemies too. So already, even in the single target build, you're seeing there's a lot of AoE happening. And then there's also Magi Spark, which goes off of our Touch of the Magi. So Touch of the Magi will also conjure a spark, causing the damage from your next Arcane Barrage, Arcane Blast, and Arcane Missiles to echo for 100% of their damage. Once it receives damage from all three spells, that will also explode, doing damage to nearby enemies. That's all of the ones I want to talk you through in here. Let's quickly talk through the hero talents. And there's one or two in the class tree as well. Um, so we have Spell Slinger. It doesn't make it any more complex, praise the Lord. When you consume Never Precision, again, that's this one up here, you conjure two arcane splinters that fire at your target. They will embed themselves into their target, dealing damage over 18 seconds. Pretty passively happening. Casting Arcane Surge will actually conjure more splinters. Um, you have 40% increased movement speed when you use Evocation. When your Magi Spark explodes, you conjure some. Um, I'm trying to think, is, is this really that interesting? It's not really that interesting. I think you need to know. Um, Splinter Storm is really cool. Whenever you've got eight or more active embedded Arcane Splinters, you automatically cast a Splinter Storm. Shatter all embedded Arcane Splinters. This is passive, dealing the remaining damage instantly. Conjure an Arcane Splinter for each Splinter Shattered, and then unleash them all, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is all passive. The only important thing is that it can uh, trigger uh, clear casting. Um, so don't worry. Spell Slinger does not make the spec any more complex. There is one specific talent I want to talk to you about here, and that is Time Anonymy. At any moment, you can passively have a chance to gain an Arcane Surge, clear casting, or Time Warp for six seconds. Um, let's just talk about the utilities that are important. I'm not going to go through all of these because this is a really overwhelming spec. Arcane Intellect, it increases everyone's intellect for an hour. It will also actually summon for you, let me turn off these action bars, you can see them. And if you do want to get my action bars, by the way, my UI, it's all on my Patreon. Um, casting Arcane Intellect will give you this little, little dude to help you in battle, passively. Um, yeah, this entire UI... Um, it's all custom made by me, excluding the weak aura in the center. That's the Luxfoss Mage weak aura. Um, you can get it on his website. But the rest of it is all custom made by me. If you want to support the channel, um, if you actually have any questions about Arcane, of course ask them in the comments. I'm happy to help you guys if you're still stuck. But we also can help you one-on-one -on -one through Patreon. Um, we have a VIP channel in Discord. We can help you with your logs, um, reviewing your logs in Arcane Mage and things like that, if, if you'd like them. Um, but also... Um, what else do we have? Counterspell is your interrupt. This is super duper useful. Mass barrier, greater invisibility, ice cold. These are defensives you can use. Mirror image is another defensive you can use. I'm going to let you read through these on your own. I don't want to overwhelm people already, but I would advise you do. Polymorph is a great utility. Frost Nova is a great utility at slowing your targets. Time warp is your bloodlust, of course. Um... And there is also Prismatic Barrier as well. Right, there we go, guys. Hopefully that was really, really useful in learning Arcane Mage. And you now are going to hit the ground running on the most difficult spec in the entire game. I'm just going to put up quickly the action bars again, just so you can screenshot them or pause here if you need to. I would lay these out like this. So you've got your burst, burst rotation, rest of rotation. Um, there for you, there. And check out the playlist you now see on screen as I do every spec in the game.